everyone, today I'm going to show you how to replace the battery in a Philips CDI. So you want to do this if your games aren't saving or your high scores aren't saving or anything. So I have the CDI 450. Uh, the process should be fairly similar for all models, but the taken apart will be different obviously, because different design and everything. So obviously you'll need your Philips CDI. Yours may well be bigger than mine, because mine is the smallest one I think. You'll need solder, this is really old. You'll need a sharp knife. I mean a sharp knife. Well, at least I think I do, I've never done this before so... You need a CR2032 battery. Same kind of as you get in a computer for the timekeeping. And a CR2032 battery holder. I just got these two things from Maplin, the local electronic shop. You'll need a soldering iron. And of course, you'll need an Allen key. And you'll need screwdriver and stuff probably. You'll need a flathead screwdriver too. Uh, I'll explain the allen key first. Philips thought it was a good idea to use an allen key to open their system. Uh, well this is also known as a hex key by the way. In case anyone doesn't know what an allen key is. So for some reason Philips thought since they invented the Philips head screw they thought it would be a good idea to change it. Although, I guess it's more secure, but more annoying. That, that, that Allen key isn't quite the right size, but it works. So if you can get one slightly smaller, it'll still work, probably. And you'll also need flux. This is also ancient. Uh, now, let's get started. I have a guide up here, just to help me along. These are the screw locations, by the way. So uh, I'm going to stop the video here and get on with it taking apart. So there are two screws hidden under this bit here. And there are some small clips just on the side here. Can't really do it with one hand but just push both in and pull it up and it'll just come off. Okay well it took me a while to figure out how to actually get this thing out. I thought you slid it back or something. But I looked up the owner's manual and down here. It says you need a special tool and you put it in this hole. So all you need to do really is get a flathead screwdriver and just put it in the hole and prise it up. Just get that out and then here you go. It's easy as that. I don't know why they had to give you a special tool to be honest but. And now you can see the other two holes here. The screw hex holes in here and then the other two are under here so I'll just take those screws out then I'll be back right so all you do after you've finished removing the screws is basically these two corners just pull up really easily but these two corners seem to be a bit harder well on mine anyway I don't know if this is the case for them all but you've got to pull them out quite a bit like pull quite hard out and up to manage to get these out Right, um, apparently this thing just lifts off, but there is a piece of white plastic somewhere. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's a bit worrying. <laughs> oh, right, it's just a cap for over that LED, right. That's fine, that's fine. Um, I'll be back to you when I find this piece of plastic. Right, I found the white plastic piece. It's just this tiny thing here. This and it basically just sits in this hole here and I think that's all so this should just lift off I think yeah, be careful there there we go that's the shielding off now we're into the actual board so if I switch back to the article um, I think this is the timekeeper chip down here this is it yes uh, I'll just show it on the screen just to make sure. 
Yep, as you can see here. Wait, it's unplugged. Hold on. Uh, that's the timekeeper ship there. And that's it there. So basically, it's just at the bottom left hand corner. It's got this symbol on it here. This is quite hard to aim when I'm looking at the screen. Um, so I'll see what to do next and I'll get back to you. Right, so basically what I am doing, it's not going great. As you can see, I can scratch the board there. Hopefully that won't make much difference. Uh, basically, all I'm doing is I'm kind of, well, basically I went like this at first, kind of saw the hole. Oh, I'll explain a bit more actually. There's a crystal or something in this end, and the battery is in this end. So you've kind of got to try not to cut through the crystal, because you need that. But you need to get into the battery. So it's probably safe to come up to about the end of Malaysia, maybe. Probably a bit further, but just try and be safe. Uh, and you've got to get a screwdriver. Just try and get the top layer of this off. And, uh, well, I'll show you some more just to help it's kind of hard to explain as you can see there's sort of a top layer so you've got to get into it then prise it off with a screwdriver then there's another layer below so just try and get the top layer off I'll let you know how that goes in a second right well basically what's happened is the knife and screwdriver wasn't really working Um, it kept slipping off and Cutting other stuff, so um, hopefully everything will still work. Uh, what I've basically done is I've broken out the Dremel. Uh, if you don't have a Dremel, you'll have to just keep at it. But unfortunately, the blade parts remain. The bit which holds them on is kind of broken. So I can only really use this and sandpaper bits. So it's not brilliant, but... I think it's better than a knife. Uh, also, I've realised this hard shell on the outside. This is really the only bit that hard, that's hard. On the inside, it's softer plastic. So you can see there's like two layers. The soft stuff's on the inside. It's really soft. It, well, it powderises sort of instantly when you put the Dremel on it anyway. So I'll get back after I'm nearly, nearly done. Well, the Dremel seems to be working okay, so if you have one, I would recommend using this. Um, but it is quite hard to control. Not really used it much before. I think I am getting quite close. I've got through to the second layer. It's really dusty though, so hopefully I'm nearly done. And I've slipped, like the Dremel slipped a couple of times. So I just hope I've not damaged the board in any way. And that scratch is annoying me. Okay, I've got some good news. I think I can just see the battery starting to shine through there. So that means I'm nearly done, hopefully. Um, I still think I've got quite a bit of work to do though. This is kind of turning into sort of a... Not as much of a guide, but sort of more like a, a vlog. So, I still hope this is useful for people, but, you know, I'm nearly there now, just a bit more to go, then I'll be able to pull the battery out. Okay, right, uh, I've just managed to get the battery out, and it's kind of fallen apart, so you can see the tops off there, so I don't, I'm going to have to be a bit careful, I don't know if these are harmful or anything, I don't really know much about batteries so I'll just pick it up and put it in the bin right well I kind of managed to get the top part of the battery off but there's still a bit in there and it's absolutely stinking like some sort of acid or something or it smells like nail polish remover okay everyone I think my Dremel has had enough the end just fell off like it's in there somewhere Wait, wait, oh, there it is. <laughs> you can't really see it, but I think it's in there. It just came off, there was a big spark, and it was gone. So, if anyone has actually gone and done this with a screwdriver, I mean, this guy did. I feel 
He should be proud. Like, that must have taken hours. Man, the Dremel can't even do it. So I'm not entirely sure what to do now, but I'll be back when I think of a plan. Okay, I have finally managed to dig the rest of the battery out with the screwdriver. Uh, it all came apart. It's all in pieces, as you can see. But there's a nice empty hole now. So now I just need to figure out a way to get rid of this part here. And there are two contacts which I solder onto, like this. Um, if any of you are doing this with a screwdriver, man, good luck. I mean, that took at least an hour with the Dremel. But, um, you know, hopefully it'll be worth it and I wouldn't just have ended up breaking this. Because that would be annoying. Anyway, see you after I get that bit done, or if anything exciting happens. Okay, I've managed to get down to the two terminals which I need to solder onto. I don't really think you can see them very well in the video. Uh, no, you can't, but... um, Yeah, I've managed to get down, and I'm just going to try and get a bit more out from around them. Then I'll start soldering onto them. The problem is, I'm not actually sure which one's supposed to be positive, but I am pretty sure it's this one, because I have worked out that, I think that, I've just read through this, and I've worked out that if that, one is, that one's supposed to be positive, and it looks like it goes to the top one, so hopefully I'm right. Okay, well, I'm going to try and solder the wires on now. I managed to get down. I found another bit for my Dremel, by the way. Smaller, but it still works just the same, really. Uh, I have the terminals showing. You can't really see them still, but... Hold on. Um, well, I've got them showing. You can see them there, right? Uh, I've got them showing. <laughs> I've got them showing enough to possibly solder onto them, but I'm not entirely sure if I can do it yet. So I'm going to try. But if I can't, I'll have to Dremel a bit more. And by the way, I would definitely recommend a Dremel for this. Maybe a bit late, but better late than never, as they say. Right. So that's me soldered on the wires onto the battery holder. Not the best soldering in the world actually probably more like the worst but it's quite a strong solder I think so hopefully it'll last not a great solder or but you know it does the job okay so I've just soldered in the battery holder uh, I really hope I've got the positive and negative thing right found another article which told me that this is the same thing as I thought so hopefully that's a good sign. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if that one there, the, that one, well everything looks weird on the screen, that one, is touching the contact. Because the contact was like, it kept going deeper and deeper in the plastic, I just could not get it out properly. So and then I had to just drop a big blob of solder on and hope for the best. So hopefully it'll stick on. I'm not sure if I should hot glue this just now or see if it works first. But I think I'll just hot glue it just now and get it over with. So I'll see you after I do that. Right, that's that all hot glued in to keep it secure. The wire was a bit long so it's kind of wrapped around. And I couldn't be bothered to cut it and solder it again. So, you know, but uh, I don't think it should get in the way. The screw hole is clear and everything. So, I'll just put the battery in now, if I can find it. Um, <laughs> right, I'll be back and do the next bit. I don't know what the next bit will be yet, but... Right, well, that's the battery in, and nothing's caught fire or anything yet, so that's a good start. Um... Hold on a second. I don't know if I'll be able to put this RF shield back on. I don't really think it'll make much difference to be honest. 
Nah, because that's going to touch the battery and I don't really like that idea much. So, I don't think they make that much difference, to be honest. Really, hopefully they don't anyway. I don't. Right, that goes on there. That was supposed to be held on by... Right, anyway, let's... I'll, I'll put the case back on and get back to you. Right, well as the CDI put back together, uh, it's a bit of a tight fit, the battery between the case and the board thing. Um, it's quite a squeeze, but it kind of fitted. I had to take it off again, though. And cut off two wee notches on the bottom of the holder, which were stopping it sitting flush. So I'll just go and plug this in. Hopefully, it'll actually work. I'll be amazed if it actually starts up, though. I have a funny feeling something may have gone wrong. Um, also, a quick note uh, I have just realised that the screws in this are not actually hex or allen keys. They are torque screwdriver bits. I was misled by an internet page which said hex keys. So I thought, alright. And uh, it worked to unscrew them, but when I was screwing them back in, it was turning. So I had a closer look at the screw, and it turned out it was actually a torque screwdriver. So I'll put in a little thing. Thing. At the bit where I say it, it's a hex key, and then you probably won't really care about this message. Right, I think that's this all set, so I want to turn this on and see if this thing actually boots. It has a green light, it's a good sign. <gasps> the screen. Oh. Oh. This is a bit of a problem. Open. Okay guys, I have no idea. I have no idea what is wrong with it. Right, well I think the battery is working. Because this time has saved for a while. I'm not sure if I left it long enough. I'll try again in the morning. And check if that still saves because that would mean the battery is working but this open message I did press the switch inside I pressed the wee switch and I think that might have put it out of sync or something uh, no it's not I don't really know what's wrong with it to be honest uh, but at least I think the battery is working but now I just can't play any games. But at least the time will be right. Okay, right. Well, I think I figured out what the problem was. Basically, the battery, you know how it was on top of the chip? Well, it was pushing up on this too much. So this switch here wouldn't go down far enough to hit the switch. And make it say that the drive was closed. So, this is not really a great fix. I would, uh, well, I'll show you the fix first. Yup, just hot glue along there. Hopefully this will fix it. But, I wouldn't recommend putting the battery on top of the chip, actually. Because, this will happen. Um, I would have moved it if it wasn't just me using it. It would just be in a cupboard most of the time anyway and you can't really see it from sort of above it's just when you look under that you can see it so a bit annoying but I don't really mind uh, let's hope it works this time though otherwise I'll have hot glued it for nothing right hopefully this should come on in a second oh okay that didn't work but the time's still saved Quite late now, actually. Um. Well. Okay, this isn't good. So. Oh, I don't know what to do anymore. Like maybe I should just. I've got an idea. Right. 
Maybe I'll just... Wait, 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 I've not plugged in the controller. Oh well. I think I know what I should do. I think... I'll just... Stick down the button inside. And turn off auto launching of the disc. So that I can select when I want to play the disc. And then that'll work fine I think. Can't see any problems with that really. Um, this could have all been avoided if I hadn't stuck the battery on the chip, but I don't really, couldn't really see anywhere else to stick it, to be honest. Ah, <sighs> Phillips, why couldn't you have just made the battery replacement easier? Okay, I finally managed to get this to work. All I did was, basically, <laughs> it's not, oh, is it? it's too dark, you can't really see it, but... Uh, I just put a bit of foil in the hole and that brings it up a bit so the switch works now. Uh, not exactly the best fix in the world but at least it works, it's good enough for me and I think I'll be keeping it for for a good long time anyway so. Um, let's just try a disc now. Uh, I'll just pause the video and then when, I don't know. I just put the disc in. Okay, here we go. Let's hope this reads. Come on. Chaos control. Come on, you can do it. Yes! Done. Oh, wait, I've not plugged in the controller. Right, I'm going to set a high score on this and check if it saves. And I'll make one last section of this video in the morning just to make sure just to check if it's overnight it's saved if, it, if it's still saved see if the battery is actually working you know it's a bit patched up and stuff but if I take off the hot glue now the foil will do the job fine and it'll just look like a normal CDI really so uh, yeah see you in the morning Right, well it seems to have saved so far, but I'll check again in the morning because, you know, some stuff can stay for a while. I'll just check again in the morning and make sure. Right, well, it's the next day everyone and it seems like it's still saved, so I'd say that worked. Um, I hope this guide has been helpful for some of you. I know it probably wasn't the best. This is kind of my first guide where I've got to solder and stuff. I've never really done it before because I knew that it would make it not work. And it kind of did, but, you know, it's good enough. It's good enough. So hopefully some of you figured out how to solder in the battery. And maybe some of you decided not to do it. So I hope I didn't put any of you off doing it. But it is quite hard to do. Or maybe I'm just not very good at it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it doesn't go on too long and it'll be in two parts if it does. So, yeah, that's it really.